we're considering the market for loanable funds and the market for foreign currency exchange and thinking through some policy uh, change some policies that might change these markets change us from our equilibrium real interest rate and our equilibrium real exchange rate so we've got a starting point here we've thought about budget deficits and how that would shift things I also want to think about I mean you can think about a number of things that would shift so let's say that there was an increase in uh, in the supply of individual savings uh, so the savings rate increases, right? We would see this supply shift to the right, right? And we can kind of think about how that would then lower the real exchange, the real interest rate. I'm sorry, that's going to, right? That should push us over here to a, uh, to, towards an increase in the net capital outflow. And that's going to then increase here, right? We'd have a supply increase that would result in a decrease and a depreciation of the real exchange rate. So you can think about a few of these policies. I want to focus in on another policy here that we can think about and kind of draw out because uh, it's a little, I think it's a little more confusing or, or a little more difficult to consider. So let's let's say that there was uh, a, a wave of nationalizations of of um, of of foreign, I'm sorry, of properties. So one of the things that came up in the 2008, 2000, uh, 2007, 2008, 2009 uh, in the recession and kind of uh, one of the ways that some of the countries were trying to uh, get out of the recession was they were taking troubled institutions and they were nationalizing them. So they were taking their banks, which were previously private banks, right? They were owned by some individuals and shareholders and they were nationalizing them. In essence, they were saying that that investment is now it is now owned by the government. And so that nationalization, um, it, it can be perceived as there's a lot of trouble within the country. It typically is perceived that way. So let's consider this. Let's say what happens if there's uh, an increase, right, an increase in nationalizations. And so what would the what would the result here be? Well, in essence, it would be jeopardizing an investor's property, right? So we would have right there would be more investments, right? More investments in investments. And I'll put domestic, right? Domestic that are that are uh, that are risky, right? We'll we'll say that they are risky here. So how do we want to consider this? Well, there's a few different ways that you could consider this on the market, but the main thing that I want to consider is how this affects net capital outflow. And the key here is that let's say that this is happening. So this is happening within your country. And what is net capital outflow? Well, it is the difference, right? It's the purchase of foreign assets by domestic residents minus the purchase of domestic assets by foreign residents. So if net capital outflow, what should we expect to happen? Well, we should expect there to be an increase in the net capital outflow in this case. So we should expect net capital outflow to increase or to shift as a result. And why would that be the case? Well, in essence, there would be no longer there would no longer be demand of uh, foreign individuals who would want to invest in our country, right? We would see this where uh, where in essence we would have a bunch of individuals, right? Domestic, we would have. Uh, so what's another way of thinking about this? We would have a bunch of domestic individ individuals who would want to purchase, right? They would want to purchase foreign assets. They would want to get away from these risky domestic assets and purchase foreign assets. So what does that look like? Well, we know that the net capital outflow, right, that's kind of this relationship out here. And what one way that we could look at this when we have kind of this flight, uh, when we have uh, kind of a capital flight, is we can think about this shifting. This could be a shift to the right here. And if we just kind of consider what this looks like, right? What does this shift to the right look like? Well, it would be a shift because we are increasing, right? We are increasing our, our net capital outflow. We are increasing uh, the, the amount of capital that, that would be leaving the country. And so what does this shift look like? Well, we know that this demand is, right? What is the supply? The supply is savings, right? And the demand here is investment plus net capital outflow. And, and we we kind of we've thought about how this identity is connected and what would this increase look like well it would be an increase here in the demand for loanable funds and I'll just mark this as demand 2 here 
And so why would that be the case? Why would this shift to the right? Well, we know that it's a component, so it has to shift to the right. I guess another way of thinking about this is, so if you're going to take your assets and invest them elsewhere, how are you going to finance that? Well, you're going to write some of that finance will have to be through loanable funds. And so there would be an increase here. What's the result going to be? Well, we would have an increase, right? The real interest rate in this domestic market that's having these problems, it's having this this kind of government intervention in the markets, right? You might also hear this as, as government intervention. That that would increase, we, we should see, macroeconomic theory would, would tell us that we should see an increase in the real interest rate. And that typically, I mean, kind of if we just, if we just take a step back, that would make sense. We should see uh, kind of an increase there. What is balancing this here? Well, if we have uh, an increase in net capital outflows, that means that we would also see kind of a trade surplus here. We would see an increase in exports in our economy as well to kind of balance this out. And what would this result in? Well, we would then be here as the as, at the new interest rate, as the new real interest rate, which would be this point kind of right here on this new net capital outflow. As a result, that's going to bring us to this point, this supply, I'll mark that as supply two. If we remember our supply here is net capital outflow, right? And that's going to that's going to intersect right at this new point as we intersect with demand, which is our net exports, right? Which we were just saying we would see an increase of exports here to kind of balance this equation. And that's going to result in a depreciation. We would result in this new real exchange rate, which should depreciate our currency, right? And so we should see that that currency that's having this government intervention, that's having the increase in nationalizations, that this might result in a, uh, in a decrease of the currency. And so we can actually see how some of these things can kind of balance themselves out as well. So what would we be see happening, or what would we see happening here? Well, we'd have this net, uh, we'd have this net capital outflow increase, but then we would also see the changes here on the real interest rate and for the real exchange rate. And then you can think through how that might affect other things within the economy, because then obviously these changes would flow through as well. Uh, and you can kind of think through how that would maybe affect uh, kind of real output, for example, uh, or some other macroeconomic indicators. So just another thing to think through here, but I think it's a good case where we can think through, well, what happens if it's not maybe a change here on the market for loanable funds, but a change instead on the actual net capital outflows themselves?